Exposition by Charles Haddon Spurgeon. Noam 2, 11 to 13, 3. This is a prophecy of the destruction of Nineveh. Remember that Assyria had been one of the great powers that swayed the world, a cruel, tyrannical empire, and God at last determined to destroy Nineveh, which was its seat of government. In a hypoetical strain, the prophet cries out, Noam 2, 11. Where is the dwelling of the lions, and the feeding place of the young lions, where the lion, even the old lion, walked, and the lions whelp, and none made them afraid? You will remember how Mr. Lard took out of the ruins at Nineveh those immense lions that now stand in the British Museum. They were the very type of this great empire that boasted itself in its lion-like strength and ferocity. So the prophet cries, Where is the lair of the lion? 12. The lion did tear in pieces enough for his whelps, and strangled for his lionesses, and filled his holes with prey, and his dens with ravine. They were always destroying and plundering and carrying home the spoil, so that everybody was fattened with the plunder of the nations. 13. Behold, I am against you, says the Lord of hosts. And whenever that is the case, a man does not need any other adversary. If God is against you, O oh my dear hearer, what will become of you? Though you should have all the power of the world and possess robust health, abundant riches and keen wit, what can you do against God? I am against you, says Jehovah of hosts. He throws down the gauntlet to Nineveh. 13. And I will burn her chariots in the smoke, and the sword shall devour your young lions, and I will cut off your prey from the earth and the voice of your messengers shall no more be heard. It is time that they were stopped. You remember in what foul-mouthed language Rabshakeh addressed King Hezekiah and God now declares that there shall be no more such letters as his. God may allow evil to lord it over his people for a while, but he puts a hook in the mouth of the Leviathan, by and by. He that restrains the sea and the waves thereof, Jehovah is his name, and he restrains the wickedness of men. Noam 3, 1. Woe to the bloody city! It is all full of lies and robbery, the prey departs not. Assyria became a great empire through violence, falsehood and robbery. The soldiers had no respect for justice. They trod out the last spark of liberty and crushed all nations under their feet. 2, 3. The noise of a whip, and the noise of the rattling of the wheels, and of the prancing horses, and of the jumping chariots. The horseman lifts up both the bright sword and the glittering spear, and there is a multitude of slain, and a great number of carcasses and there is no end of their corpses, they stumble upon their corpses. When the Middle Babylonian army came against the great city, it inflicted a terrible slaughter, killing the inhabitants without mercy, making a very holocaust of human bodies. But, inasmuch as it was a den of criminals, this horrible execution was well deserved. Yet is the story dreadful. 4, 5. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts, that sells nations through her whoredoms, and families through her witchcrafts. Behold, I am against you, says the Lord of hosts. These people had been steeped in sin of the worst kind. They had led other nations into it and had practiced the witchcrafts which God abhors. Therefore, again, Jehovah says, I am against you. When God is in arms against a triumphant nation, 
he soon makes an end of it. 5, 6. And I will discover your skirts upon your face, and I will show the nations your nakedness, and the kingdoms your shame. And I will cast abominable filth upon you, and make you vile, and will set you as a gazing stock. See what God can do. They were the proudest of the proud and now he makes them the scorn of the scorner, and sets them as a gazing stock. May God never deal in that way with any proud man, here. He can easily do it, when we set ourselves up to be little gods, he can soon make us utterly mean and contemptible, and bring us down to nothing at all. It is his way to deal thus with the proud. 7. And it shall come to pass, that all they that look upon you shall flee from you, and say, Nineveh is laid waste, who will bemoan her? Where shall I seek comforters for you? If you could go, today, and see the vast heaps of Kui Unjik, and of the great monuments of that mighty city all destroyed and crumbling into powder, you would know something of what God can do. It does not look likely to you that London can ever become a heap of ruins and yet it may be, for its sins reek up to heaven as the sins of Nineveh did. The Lord can strike this city as he smote that. 8. Are you better than popular snowman, that was situated among the rivers, that had the waters round about it, whose rampart was the sea, and her wall was from the sea? The prophet quotes the destruction of the city called Noaman, probably Thebes, as an instance of what God can do. 9. Ethiopia and Egypt were her strength, and it was infinite. There seemed to be no measure to her strength. If she needed assistance from other nations, she had only to call them in and the mercenary tribes were ready to defend her. 9, 10. Put and Lubin were your helpers. Yet was she carried away, she went into captivity, her young children also were dashed in pieces at the top of all the streets, and they cast lots for her honorable men, and all her great men were bound in chains. So one city is a warning to another. Noaman in Egypt is a warning to Nineveh in Assyria and both of these are warning to our city, and a warning to every man who is proud, haughty, domineering and oppressive to the poor, great in his own wisdom and careless for the comfort of others. 11. You also shall be drunken, you shall be hid, you also shall seek strength because of the enemy. Nineveh never dreamed of doing that. She said, I am a queen, I shall see no sorrow. I am the greatest of all cities. 12. All your strongholds shall be like fig trees with the first tripe figs, if they are shaken, they shall even fall into the mouth of the eater. As figs do when they are ripe. These castles, towers, fortresses, built to stand the siege would be no sooner attacked than they would fall into the hands of the enemy. 13. Behold, your people in the midst of you are women. You see, on those great Assyrian stones, the strong men that are sculptured, there, with their enormous muscles, telling of gigantic force. When God came to deal with them, they became weak and cowardly. 13. 14. The gates of your land shall be set wide open unto your enemies, the fire shall devour your bars. Draw you waters for the siege. The prophet challenges them to defend themselves. 14. Fortify your strongholds, go into clay, and tread the mortar, make strong the brick kiln that was to mend the walls whenever they were broken. They did this with great industry. Do it, says God, yet you shall not be able to stand. 
1517. The shall fire devour you, the sword shall cut you off, it shall eat you up like the canker worm, make yourself many as the canker worm, make yourself many as the locusts. You have multiplied your merchants above the stars of heaven, the canker worm spoils, and flees away. Your crowned are as the locusts, and your captains as the great grasshoppers, which camp in the hedges in the cold day, but when the sun arises they flee away, and their place is not known where they are. What marvelous poetry is this! How terrible! Their soldiers, their rulers, their captains, were as many as the locusts and the grasshoppers, but when they were needed, all these hosts would flee away. What cannot God do when he comes out to fight with men? The Lord is a man of war, the Lord is his name. He brings confusion to his enemies. Oh, fight not against him. Beloved, let us be at peace with him, the strong and mighty God. Let us confess our faults to him, acquaint ourselves with him and be at peace. 18. Your shepherds slumber, O king of Assyria. They who should have taken care of the people, the chief governors, neglected them. They who should have defended the people were out of the way when they were needed, your shepherds slumber, O king of Assyria. 18. Your nobles shall dwell in the dust, your people are scattered upon the mountains, and no man gathers them. Let not the same be said of London. Are there any who can say, No man cares for my soul? Let them not be without a helper. Oh, come, let us go and find them. In the paths of death they roam. At the close of the date will be sweet to say. I have brought some lost one home. Brothers and sisters, awaken yourselves, be shepherds to the people of this modem Nineveh and seek to gather the scattered flock of Christ. 19. There is no healing of your bruise, your wound is grievous. Thank God we have not come to that point, yet there is still healing for the bruised sinner. Though the wounds of our people are grievous, there is a balm for them. We know where it is and what it is, let us not be slow to tell them about it. 19. All that here brute of you shall clap the hands over you. I think that is the old Norman French word, brute, signifying noise or tumult, that has been left in our Bible. 19. For upon whom has not your wickedness passed continually? Nineveh had been so wicked and had done so much evil that when men heard that it was destroyed, they would even clap their hands for very joy that such an evildoer was out of the way. I know not to what purpose I was moved to read this passage, but it is specially meant for someone, to whom may God apply it by his Spirit.